Tonight on Connecticut's news station, we're seeing even more DNA evidence in the Michelle Traconis trial. We'll have the new details coming from court. Plus, growing concerns about keeping kids safe online. We're hearing from Connecticut educators about how the Internet is impacting learning. And something else from Stu Leonard's has been recalled once again for not including an allergen in its ingredient list. A warning tonight to check your food. Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. We're now 17 days into the Michelle Traconis trial. And again, prosecutors are presenting DNA evidence in the investigation into the presumed murder of Jennifer Dulos. At this time, confirming the blood found on certain items uh, was in fact a match to Jennifer's DNA. And in some cases, there were matches to other people as well. Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc has a breakdown from court. Match after match at least 100 billion times more likely to occur if it originated from the source of the DNA profile from the swabbing of the electric toothbrush. Forensic scientist Kristen Maydell went through dozens of pieces of evidence she compared to different sources of DNA, one of them coming from the toothbrush of Jennifer Farber Dulos. The toothbrush is really the person we know to be Jennifer Dulos. Correct, yes. Several of the samples were a match to Jennifer's DNA, like the blood found on a bra and T-shirt, both stuffed in garbage bags in Hartford the day she disappeared. Bags police say her estranged husband, Fotis Dulos, got rid of, with his then-girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, in the passenger seat. In a few scenarios, Maydell says Fotis's DNA was found on that evidence. At least 100 billion times more likely to occur if it originated from Fotis Dulos. And on one of the garbage bags, Maydell says they found a match to Traconis's DNA. The DNA profile from item 883S7 is at least 780,000 times more likely to occur if it originated from Michelle Traconis. When Maydell ran the test a second time to a newer sample given by Traconis in 2023, that number decreased. Still, prosecutors making this connection. The defendant in her third interview with police indicated to them that she held a bag open for Mr. Dulos as he deposited something in the bag. Is it possible that her DNA could have gotten on the bag as she was holding it? Yes, that's that's possible. Traconis's defense attorney, John Schoenhorn, pointing out that we're talking about DNA that is equivalent to three human skin cells. Michelle was in a truck with her boyfriend. The fact that three or even 10 cells could have gotten on uh, him when he got out and uh, threw away those bags does not even suggest that she ever touched those bags. Now, Maydell says there was also a human hair found on a sponge in one of those garbage bags coming up as a match to Pavel Gumiani, who is one of Fotis's employees. Now, it was a mitochondrial match, however, which means that it could have been Pavel's hairs or one of his maternal family members. We are in Stamford, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Okay, Julia, thank you. The Hartford Police Union is now calling for an apology from the state lawmaker who was attacked this past summer while leaving a Muslim prayer service at the XL Center. The union's raising concerns over comments Representative Khan made regarding how police handled the incident. Fox 61's Angelo Bavaro shares the union's message. The Hartford Police Union writing a one-page open letter to Representative Khan. The title of that letter, very direct and simple, it says apology owed. Now, the union starts that letter by expressing empathy for Khan, what she went through, but then goes on to detail what the union says are serious accusations made by Khan against the Hartford Police Department. I understand that there was a lightning bolt and it shattered her world for that moment. And we did a good job putting it back together. And she has consistently condemned us. The comments by Representative Khan were made during a July press conference. That's when she called for an investigation into how Hartford police respond to violent crimes. Khan said when officers arrived, she did not immediately get medical attention until she asked for it, felt she had to convince them she was injured and was not escorted back to her car by police. Khan also questioning how another Muslim woman would have been treated by police. So many systems failed that day. And I know that our systems are not perfect. This is why I ran for office. 
but they cannot be this broken. In its letter, the Hartford Police Union responding to Khan's comments by writing, quote, over the past seven months, the Hartford Police Union has diligently represented the responding officers during two comprehensive investigations. The results of both investigations indicate that the responding officers, while having some deficiencies in report writing documentation, acted in an outstanding, polite and professional manner, ultimately delivering justice for her. We sat down with Union saying, President James Rutkowski this morning. Power. When you want to talk about saying that women, black and brown women, are not safe in Hartford, that's irresponsible. The police are there. How many women have not called the police because she got up on stage in a press conference and said that they're not safe? Hartford police arresting 30-year-old Andre Desmond in that attack. Reporting in the capital city, I'm Angelo Bavar, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. We reached out to Representative Miriam Khan and her team multiple times for a response to the union. We are still waiting to hear back. Now to a developing story. The Office of the Inspector General is investigating a deadly shooting involving a police officer. This happened last night in Ansonia, but the incident started in Bridgeport. That's where police say they tried to stop a driver around 5 o'clock. They say the driver sped away on Route 8 North. Police stopped the car along Division Street in Ansonia. That's when investigators say a Bridgeport police officer open fire, killing the driver. Other details about the incident have been, been released and the officers involved in the shooting have been placed on modified duty until the investigation is complete. Police are investigating a shooting in Berlin. It happened on Deming Road last night just after 9. Police say a 17-year-old walked into the hospital with a gunshot wound to her stomach. She is expected to recover. No word on any suspects. Two children are dead after a serious crash in Beacon Falls. It happened just after 3 yesterday afternoon. State police say a Honda Civic and a Ford pickup truck collided near exit 23 of Route 8 North. The two children who uh, died were in the back seat of the Civic. They were 6 and 3 years old. The driver and front seat passenger in the Civic were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. The driver in the pickup truck was hospitalized for minor injuries. And Hartford police have identified the person shot and killed late last night. Uh, police say Jose Cortez was shot on Cabot Street just before 1130. Officers found him sitting in a car with multiple gunshot wounds. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Right now, no word on any suspects and the incident remains under investigation. Time for a check on the forecast. A sunny start to the week, but will it stick around? Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now with a look at the forecast. Rach? Yeah, we seem to be stuck in this sunny pattern now. Last week it was the clouds, so uh, we're, we're okay with it, right? Today's high temperature, 44 degrees, well above the average high, which is in the mid-30s. And I actually think we'll continue to see numbers rise as we head into the days ahead. Wait until you see this weekend. Impressive, record challenging warmth. But right now, it's 38 degrees in Hartford, low 30s in Waterbury, and right around the 40 degree mark for the New Haven area. You'll see some snow showers here scattered across parts of Maine, and there are some clouds to the east as well. It's kind of hard to see here on the satellite, but some of those might occasionally try to sneak into eastern Connecticut over the course of the next couple of days, but mostly this offshore storm, and you can see the swirl, will stay offshore heading through the evening tonight by the news at 11 temperatures are right around the 30 degree mark and we're looking at overnight lows tumbling back into the 20s but again waking up with plenty of sunshine out there and it is another nice bright day you will notice a bit of a breeze it's been around the last couple of days winds out of the north at about 5 to 15 miles per hour and we are only going to warm up from here your full forecast will take a look coming up Thank you, Rachel. New tonight, the Connecticut Coalition to End Homelessness has unveiled their agenda for 2024. During a press conference this morning, officials called for $20 million to stabilize and strengthen the state's homeless response system. Officials say the funding is necessary for saving lives and expanding access to resources. 
Washington lawmakers have finally released the long-awaited border bill aimed at uh, reining in illegal immigration there. However, Republicans still aren't sold. Their main point of contention is a measure that would force the Biden administration to shut down the border after seven days of 5,000 migrant encounters per day. The bill also unlocks billions in emergency aid for Ukraine and Israel, but with it unlikely to pass, the House is expected to vote on a standalone package for Israel this week. Our local leader speaking out about the proposed deal. Here's what Senator Richard Blumenthal had to say. I am very encouraged by this national security package because it protects our security at the border by limiting, for example, some of the loopholes in the asylum system, but it also provides robust funding for Ukraine and Israel where our nation's security is so much at stake. Governor Annette Lamont and Republican Governor uh, Phil Scott of Vermont uh, have published a call to Congress to pass the border deal. Over the weekend, Governor Lamont said on Squawk Box, uh, he offered the Connecticut National Guard to President Biden, telling the host of the influx of uh, immigration is a backyard issue for everyone. He talked about how even New England states will see the effects, showing his frustration with the stall. Lamont says he has offered the guard to station at the border, adding, quote, we're trying to get this bipartisan compromise. You know, Congress, things take a long time. They've got to get it done, end quote. New here at 6, a recall to tell you about involving a product sold at Connecticut Stu Leonard's locations. The grocery chain is recalling its chicken salad and sliced chicken because the products might contain milk, even though that's not listed on the ingredient list. The products have been sold at their deli department for years, up until January 29th of this year. No illnesses have been reported, though. A 25-year-old woman recently died after eating a cookie from the store. The company had left out an allergen from its ingredients list there. Well, still to come.